Well, praise the name of Jesus. We're so delighted to be here in your presence again on another Lord's Day. We just bless the Lord for you. We just praise the Lord and we just glorify the Lord. Thank you for watching and joining Kingdom Come Now broadcast. Dr. Kilafa Kali here from Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. We thank you for joining us on this Lord's Day. Father, we just bless you. We just glorify you. We just magnify you. We just lift you up. We just, hallelujah. Thank you for what you've done and thank you for what you continue to do. Thank you for your awesome presence that's filling this place. Thank you and we declare your kingdom come. Your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in our body, in our soul, over our cities, over our villages, over our townships, over our nations, over our, the regions of the earth. Kingdom of Jesus come now. Would you pray that with me? Kingdom of Jesus be released now with power and with great authority. Let the revelation of the kingdom of Jesus Christ be over the nations today, over the churches today, over every village, every governmental system. Let all the kingdoms of the world system come under the kingdoms of the Lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the nations know that you are Lord. Let every tribe, every language, every people groups come into the saving knowledge of the King and his powerful kingdom that governs the universe, that governs eternity. Let men, women, boys, and girls come in to the truth of the kingdom that prevails. Lord, I thank you for the kingdom of God that prevails. Prevails over sickness, over disease, over poverty, over lack, over despair, over Satan's kingdom. The kingdom of Jesus Christ rules over the authority of demons and the realms of demonic yokes and chains and burdens of the enemy. I thank you that the kingdom of Jesus Christ rules and governs with power and a great authority. For you said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in all the world. Matthew 24 and 14, as a witness unto all nations, then the end shall come. We declare this message of the kingdom goes from nation to nation. Hallelujah. Generation to generation goes across racial barriers, goes across uh, um, religious barriers and let religions bow at the truth that Jesus is not only Lord and Savior but he is King of the universe let this kingdom message go in the Americas let this kingdom message go over uh, Asia Southeast Asia Northern Asia let this kingdom go over the Pacific Isles or the Pacific Isles. Uh, let this kingdom message go over Australia and New Zealand. Let this kingdom go forward over Africa. Let this kingdom invade Europe. Let this kingdom invade the Middle East and the United Emirates. Let this kingdom invade the Isles of the Caribbean. Let this kingdom message prevail over Central and South America. Let this kingdom invade Iceland and Antarctica. Let this kingdom revelation invade the financial systems of the world, the economic systems of the world. Let this kingdom message prevail and rule in the governments of every nation. Let every governmental leader hear this message of the kingdom. Apply it to bless the nations and citizenship of its people. Let this kingdom message. The message that is stable. The message of Jesus Christ that is governmental, that's stable, that's eternal, that's proven. That's tested. Let the laws of the kingdom that have been tested for eternity stand and remain and be released in all the earth. If you're agreeing with me, say amen. Come on, pray with me. Lord, let this kingdom invade. Come on, touch your own body. Lord, let this kingdom invade my own life. Wherever any power of darkness exists in my life, I declare the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Crush it out. Let the kingdom of Jesus Christ Rule and reign in every part of our cell, every part of our being. 
Let the kingdom of God rule in every part of our musculoskeletal system. Let the kingdom of God rule in every part of our intellect and our mind and our thinking and our will and our desires. Let the kingdom of God rule and reign. Come on, receive it for your life. Even as you do that, the power of Jesus is coming into your life and mind. We have to give him authority to come in. Let your kingdom come, oh God, over my family, over my home, over everything that concerns my life and yours. Come on, declare it. Say, I declare the kingdom to have preeminence, to have authority, to have all legal rights. Jesus, have all legal rights. I renounce my rights and I give my rights over to you, Lord Jesus, to rule and reign in my life, in my family, in my home, in that my operations, in my personal dealings, in my personal life and personal integrity. Let the kingdom of Jesus Christ rule over the ministry, over the teaching, over the message, over the operation of everything that I do and say on a daily basis. Lord Jesus, let Jesus the King be seen in my life and yours. Let the life of Jesus Christ be over us. Let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. Let the mind of Christ be over us. Let the, we put on the mind of Christ. We put on the whole arm of the Lord over my life and our families right now. We put the powerful blood of Jesus. We apply that powerful blood that was shed 2,000 years ago that still heals people every day. That still forgives people every day. That still washes away sins every day. That still overcomes the wicked one by the blood of the Lamb every day. We apply that blood of Jesus over our mind, body, soul, and spirit. We apply the blood of Jesus over our home, our properties, and our possessions. We apply the blood of Jesus over our ministry and our mandate. We apply the blood of Jesus over our message, over our lives. We apply the blood of Jesus over everything concerning us. For the glory of God, Father, we thank you for victory. Thank you for strength to carry out the purposes of your kingdom in our lives. Everyone that's listening and watching, I speak the blessing of the Lord God upon you. Let the glory of the Lord be upon you. Let the power of his mighty will be upon your life. Let uh, transformation take place today by the authority of Jesus' name. I command every sickness and every disease that's under the sound of this message and under the sound of our voice to dry up now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that your authority is greater than Satan. Jesus, you rule over Satan. Praise God. You rule over diseases. You rule over nations. You rule over governments. You rule over kings. The word of the Lord said, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. You control the hearts and minds of men. You tell them whether to go left or right. It is in your authority and power. You set up nations and you bring them down. You can destroy nations. You establish the boundaries of nations. You establish people groups and with one word you can establish a nation and with one word you can destroy a nation. And so we give you praise, Lord. Thank you that you're the awesome king. And we want to submit our lives to your rulership and governments. We're tired of the lying governments of man if they're outside of the government of heaven. You said when the righteous are in power, Hallelujah, the people rejoice. And when the wicked are in power, the people mourn and cry. Lord, around the world, people are mourning and crying because the operation of governments around the world have robbed and raped and abused so many people. The systems of this world are satanic and demonic, many of them. They're governed by satanic laws. And those satanic laws are all for me. Do what thou will. Uh, that's the motto of the wicked satanic agenda. Uh, like, do what thou will. Fulfill your own desires. Fulfill your own fleshly desires. Eat what you want. Have what you want. Do what you want. Hallelujah. I don't worry about anything. That's the demonic mantra. Hallelujah. But in the kingdom it is lift up the name of Jesus. Seek first the kingdom. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, body, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That is the philosophy of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. But the philosophy of Satan's kingdom. 
is do whatever thou will. That means whatever pleases your body, mind, flesh, and intellect, do, even if it costs other people's their people their lives. But Father, bless this meeting, bless this time. And we won't stop to give you the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Let everyone say amen. I greet you all in Jesus' name. God bless some of you. Uh, we're seeing you. We're going to jump into the word of God. We're still talking about the kingdom of God, the stable kingdom, and the equity and justice of the kingdom. I want to thank God for you. I want you to pray for us. I don't want you spectating. I need you praying during this session. It's going to be power packed. Pray, pray, pray. Hallelujah. Pray. But get your notepads, get your books, get your uh, pens, begin to write. If you like, I ask you kindly to uh, share this message. Share this, share this, share this. And I pray this becomes a blessing to the lives of God's people. Yeah, Pastor Pinder, God bless you. Pastor Taylor, God bless you. Uh, Apostle Peter, God bless you. Apostle Carkey, blessings, greetings. Uh, Prophet Shalewa and all of the saints of God. Apostle Vivak Nepal, we thank God for Southeast Asia and your partnership and your love and your fellowship as we work together. We pray for Southeast Asia and Nepal, oh God, to continue to fill the nations of India, Nepal, hallelujah, Bhutan, hallelujah, Indonesia, Malaysia, Bangladesh. We pray and we continue to partner with you, our leaders in that region. We thank God for you. We thank God for you so much and we bless you. In the name of Jesus, over the last few years, our partnership, we're seeing the fruit of lives being transformed. In Jesus' name, Ferguson, God bless you. Greetings to all of you, those who are watching live and those who are watching on our broadcast. Hallelujah. We ask you to uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube page. That's Kami Bahamas. Like and subscribe to that. You can also go and watch more of these powerful teachings we've been doing right here on this Facebook page or Kingdom Apostolic Ministries international look for our face because I, I i'm told there's another somebody using the name hey what can we say look for our name and our message and we'll be happy to join you shalani god bless you god bless you woman of god god bless you family of god let's jump into the word of the lord this morning we won't delay like this share this because we're going to dive into this and then we are going to uh, praise the lord go into uh ministering prophetically to you and your families and your homes. Hallelujah. Those who are not on yet, tell them, get on now. I'm not going to wait any longer. The prayer has already gone up. And what we did just now was teach you how to pray the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I want to engage you in, in some things. But let me switch it up today. I'm going to jump into some teachings this morning. I'm talking about the equity and fairness of the kingdom. Why am I dealing with this? Praise the Lord. I just feel the Holy Spirit in here and he is moving in this room. We've already saturated this atmosphere with the worship and the presence of the Lord and he is moving on me powerfully. I'm trying to just contain the glory that's on me to deliver this word today. And what a wonderful time. Shalewa and our team are praying and believing God. Praise the Lord. Um, um, let me get into this message. The, the world system is crumbling. You know, as we travel around the world and we meet people of every nation, tribe, and tongue, you know, me as, uh, you know, in my even profession, I've come across so many people of so many diverse backgrounds, and it's the same. You know, I, I was talking to a man from the Middle East just uh, this week, and, you know, we, we shared, we were talking, and, you know, they're the same. We talked about every human wants fairness, justice, opportunity and hope praise God but he and I uh, concluded that it will never happen in the earth like it should because in his country as well as mine as well as yours and everyone that's listening there has been just a manipulation of power of resources and opportunity and it has never trickled down to the people and the people must not depend on a man and its system because Man is going to give resources to his own. Hallelujah. If you continue to wait for some uh, pie in the sky, uh, it's not going to happen for you. I'm sorry. You're going to have to apply this word of God and get it in your life. I'm telling you, after many years of studying this thing, I've seen it. I, I, You know, people are so deceived today. They are looking for some superhero to come, whether it's in North America or throughout Africa or Asia. People are waiting for a natural human 
in the Middle East to come and to resurrect them. Praise God. I believe, though, yes, I do believe the Lord is raising up some righteous leaders. And if people put righteous leaders in position and they govern their uh, nation or their organization, whatever level of leadership it is, if it's national, if it's governmental, if it's organizational, if it's even in the body of Christ, if those leaders govern their lives according to these laws of the kingdom of God that we're going to talk about, I'm telling you, everyone will have equal opportunity to be tremendously blessed. Sadly, though, many of these nations and territories govern by injustice. They go into every nation, every nation. The people go in, the leaders go in, and they have self-interest, and it will always be the case. They go in, and they're elected whatever level, and they go in, and they rape the land. They take the natural resources. They take the resources of every nation and use it for themselves and their families and their loved ones and their partners and people at the end of every voting process are disenfranchised. That's everywhere around the world. That's why the word of God said we have to pray for leaders so that the demonic kingdom does not enter into their hearts. Because I've seen many good people who had great intentions. I've seen pastors who went into politics. And before they left, they were in corruption and scandal and shame and disgrace. I've seen people who said they were intercessors and prayer warriors and all manner of giftings in the body of Christ. And they went in there and the pull of that system was so strong that they were sucked into, hallelujah, perversion. Hallelujah, it's very, very hard. It's the world system. Hallelujah, it's the system of the world. Can you overcome it? Yes, by the power of the Holy Spirit and great prayer and great deep foundation in the kingdom. You know, it's no different from medicine. When I went into medicine, I'm still in medicine as a practitioner. Man, listen, if I didn't have the operation of the kingdom of God, I could have lied. I could have aborted babies for $600. You know, I could have done all kind of illegal, illicit activity, a drug trade. Uh, it's not because anybody, yes, there are laws that they ask not you to do, but I'm telling you, I didn't do because the kingdom of God was in me. Praise God. I was more afraid of violating Jesus' kingdom laws and losing my soul's salvation than what folks say. So you cannot legislate laws highly for abortion. Why? Because someone who wants a thousand dollars to pop the, the life of an innocent child doesn't care less. They're going to find a way to conceal that. Praise God. Hallelujah. You cannot legislate laws for someone not to pull a gun. You can have curfew. Look at us. We've had curfew and there's still more killing than you even imagine. Hallelujah. Because uh, locking people down at a certain time doesn't stop man's evil agenda. The satanic powers that govern the hearts of these people. Uh, listen here. You can, you know, shut down all day. They will go in the morning and shoot up as we've seen. There's nothing that stops uh, a man from cheating on his wife other than, you know, the law of the kingdom of God. You know, that's why I tell many young people when they're counseling, they bring men and the men are not saved, don't love Jesus. I know it's heading for a wreck. Hallelujah. If a young lady loves Jesus and the man doesn't love Jesus more than or equal, I say more than because the man is the leader. He must love the Lord. My wife, I love the Lord more than her. I know she's catching up, but I keep staying out in front. If she praying, I pray 10 times more. I'm worshiping 10 times more. I'm studying. Why? I'm the leader. And so I, I have to lead by kingdom authority. What am I saying? Hey, I, I've seen young ladies who come with men. The man don't love Jesus. Praise God. And they want my opinion. I tell them it's not going to work. Because that man is governed by his flesh. He's governed by satanic forces. As good as he may seem, as handsome and muscular and smart as he may seem, as wealthy as he is, I'm telling you, when that demonic kingdom tells him to cheat on you, he's going to another woman. Where if he is not filled with the government of God in his life, when that man, hallelujah, wants to go back to his ex-lover, he is gone. When that man wants to go, praise God, for a prostitute, he is gone. When that man wants to do something to make money, uh, when, he, when he gets in his mood of anger and rage and wrath and bitterness, he is going to fulfill that because he's governed by a different power. Praise God. I, I'm going somewhere. 
when that woman wants to have her own way, I don't care how beautiful she is, if she's not governed by the kingdom laws and wants to submit her life and her soul to the word of God, she's going to be one bitter woman. She's going to be one rebellious woman. She's going to be one difficult woman. You can't tell her anything. She won't listen. Praise God because she is governed by her emotion. She is governed by her senses. She is governed by by her mood and there's nothing wrong with that if those moods if those personalities if those uh temperaments are not governed by the word of god and her submission to her husband and to her father she is going to be a train wreck and many many men have found that out to be the case what am i saying if you don't raise those children up with the kingdom of god's government if you don't rule, rain them up, raise them up with the powerful word of God in their life. If you want to be just a sissified Christian, if you want to be just somebody that everyone likes, and you don't want to be seen as too holy, and hallelujah. You know the Muslims are training their children to be most um, radical Islamic people. Satanists are doing the same thing. Buddhists, Hindus, they are radical, I'll tell you that. Only the Christians, not kingdom people now, only the Christians feel they're going to let their children or grandchildren grow up, do what they want, marry who they want. You know, in Islam, some of those sects, you cannot even marry outside because they understand they have a kingdom to protect. It's the kingdom of Islam, and they don't want that watered down by their son or daughter marrying some other religion because it means... They're not thinking about that generation. The following generation will be watered down in Islam, if I can put it that way. They want a strong Islamic root. And they want not only Islamic roots, but they want Islamic nations. I'm telling you, those satanic kingdoms understand this is not about you and I. Yes, we started out late today, but I told my wife we got to go on because... We have a kingdom agenda, and that's for nation. What am I saying? Islam wants to overtake nations. Islam, they call themselves the nation of Islam. They don't want to be just the people of Islam. They don't want to be in the church of Islam. They don't want to be a denomination. They want to govern nations by Islamic Shari laws. That's the fight in India. That's the fight in the Middle East. That's the fight going on in London and in Europe and in America and the nations of the world, wherever... Muslims go, they want to take over the nation. They have projections of taking over major cities that they're working on now. While you and I, if we don't get this kingdom message right, and if we don't prepare ourselves to take this kingdom and take over nations, Satan wants to take over nations. He wants to take over your nation. He wants to take over it through Islam. He wants to take it like India he, and, and, uh, and, and Southeast Asia. He wants to take over those nations with uh, Hinduism, Hindustan. He wants those states to remain under the control of Hinduism or Buddhism. Ah, Southeast Asia, China, Hong Kong, the Maldives, Japan. They want... To take over those nations with the philosophy and the teaching of Buddhism and Confucianism. Or in Africa, where they want to invade also with Islam. Or African spiritualism. The worship of ancestors. I mean, that is operational. Or tribalism. And tribalism is heavy in Africa. Ah, I've been all from the north, south, east, and west multiple times. And the prevailing power is Islam now invading northeast Africa from Nigeria all the way across. Northeast Nigeria. Or in South Africa with the worship of ancestors or animal worship. Hallelujah. You see these people who put on the head of lion and who have lion as their logo. Not I'm talking about righteous people. I'm talking about, you know, you know the Rastafarians. What do they associate themselves with? With their head and a lock, lion. That's, come, that's straight out of Africa. That's ancestral worship. That's the worship of animals, animalism. They worship the lion there. 
They worship the giraffe. They worship the snake, the cobra. You got to understand this thing. The cobra, the snake, and the lion is their God. They try to emulate that. I don't want to be like no lion. I want to be like Jesus. Praise God. I'm not nowhere in scripture that Jesus said you must imitate. He said he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's metaphoric. Never in scripture did Jesus say you are a lion. You should fall off to the pot to be a lion. No. He said you're a son. You're a king. You're a priest. That is a new thing now. That's nothing more. People who are doing that and bringing it in the church is the same spirit the Rastafarian govern their lives by. They feel their lions. And where did they get that from? Their symbol is the lion. I'm not talking about the lion in, 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 in our setting where people understand the lion of Judah. We understand Jesus is the lion of Judah. But I'm telling you where the deep worship of, of these animals come in on the cobra or the snake. They're from animal worship that came out of Africa and that came into the Caribbean where people who joined the Rastafarian movement worship the lion and the snake. And then they took that from there. People now in the church now are saying the same thing. Now, if you have a revelation that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah and you want to follow that, praise God, that's totally biblical. But some people have taken on the character of the lion. I don't want a character of the lion. I want to be a son. I, God didn't call me to be an animal. He called me to be greater than an animal. He called me to be a son, a kingdom citizen, an ambassador of the kingdom, a priest and a king unto the most high God. And our lives are governed by that. Let's get into this word of God. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. We want to be like little Jesuses. Yeah, we want to represent Jesus in the earth. Let's talk about equity. And, and I've said enough, but let me tell you the principles today. I have a few principles that's going to transform your life. Uh, I was beaten up. I was defeated. I was disdained. I was distraught. I was disenfranchised. I was just this, this, this. Until I came into the truth of the kingdom of God, uh, my family and I, and we are transformed. Hallelujah. Do we live victoriously? Yes. Do we live by faith? Yes. Do we live by prayers? Yes. Do we need your prayers? Yes. But we have found out who we are and it doesn't matter which government is in or not. It doesn't matter what nation we're in or not. In fact, we are, you know, our tentacles of our ministry and our presence and the power of God in our life has invaded nations and cities because of this principle and you need to be too. You need to be global so that when they come one way, you're in another place. When they come this way, you're up here. Hallelujah. You Keep invading and evading the satanic devil. You need to be great in the kingdom. Let's talk about the greatness of the kingdom first. I close down on this last time. I'm going to begin with this and get your Bibles from Matthew 19. This is going to transform your life. Jesus, three principles. One, Jesus has a kingdom. His kingdom and government is eternal. It means it existed what? Past, now, and eternity. There is no, this is not a new message. You're not, if something is eternal, what I'm teaching now is not a new message. It's new to you and I, but it existed for eternity. Whether we get it or not, hallelujah, praise God, guess what's going to happen? I told some people, if they don't get the kingdom of God now, they're going to be in my kingdom class in eternity. Praise God. When their life is over, when Jesus comes back, don't think you're going to just uh, vanish into space and uh, come back to some angel or you're just going to be walking around in robes for eternity. No, in eternity the kingdom of God will still exist. I'm going to let you think on that for a minute. If the kingdom of God is eternal, there's no beginning, no middle, no end. When this world is dissolved and Jesus comes back, it means you and I still will be operating in these kingdom principles. And if you didn't get it down here in earth, well, you're going to have to come to my kingdom class, and I'm going to teach you in my kingdom class. Why? Because I'm teaching it from now. <laughs> Praise God. And if you didn't take time to learn it and get it now, it's never going to change, and it's never going away. So I encourage you to get this kingdom message now. How do I do that? Well, follow along with these studies, and, and get it, and go in your Bible and study it for yourself. We have material on Amazon, the Kingdom Book Trilogy, four books. That we have laid down so about 20 plus years. And if you get that, it's going to transform your life. Or you're going to be in my class in heaven. Praise God. Because you're going to have to operate in these laws in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom when Jesus establishes it on earth. But until then, let's get busy with what we have to do now. 
Uh, Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 to 4. Hallelujah. Now, after this, I want to notify you. Share this, like this, get your family to know, hear these teachings now. Because after this, you have no excuse. This week and even in our nation, it's going to be a big shakeup. It's going to be a great disappointment like never before all around. There's going to be upset. There's going to be disappointments. There's going to be distraction. Some people are going to lose their job. Some people are going to gain jobs. Some people are going to be out of the political arena forever. They're going to go into retirement after this. Either way, many, this is their last. This is it. This is the critical. It's a new generation. It's a new people hungry for change and hungry for righteousness and hungry for truth. And they will never, ever, ever lose the truth of what they've come into. The Lord has removed the scales, he bashando, from off the eyes of the people. And yea, said the Lord God of hosts, he bakasha, for a Monday she could have Monday seal. Yes, said the Lord. Uh, mm. The Lord is not revealing who's going to be the winner. But the Lord is revealing people get ready. And people, uh, you better have a trust in the Lord like never before because it's going to be a great shaking. Shabosia. It's going to be a great back and forth. It's going to be a great confusion. It'll be a great fight. It's going to be a great protest because many's hearts are set on promises that are being made to them all around. Many are set on positions and jobs. I know that happens every time, but at this time, the cry is even greater. There are many people, Eva Shanda, and if we don't pray this week, and really ask the Lord to intervene and let righteousness prevail and let people make decisions and vote and decide based on righteous decision and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Oh, there's going to be crying. Ooh, I'm trying to get in the word, but Lord God. Oh, God. As I came on this morning, I hear the cries of the people crying. Oh, from the hospital to the streets. Oh, the cries of the saints, and many of them cried and said, Lord, the weight is so heavy, take me out. Hallelujah. And the Lord has taken out some of the saints. You're wondering why many of the saints are dying. Many, 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 many of them because of the pressure. They said, Lord, just take me home. While I'm still saved, take me home. And some of them are on the verge of, of maybe walking away from the Lord. The Lord said, I'm going to take you home before you walk out of the will of the Lord for your life. At least your soul will be preserved. But many, many are on the verge of the edge. Rebecca, see, and they've said, Lord, even the church has become compromised. And even the ministers that were once grounded in the faith have walked away. Many, many, many who were once vibrant and on fire for the name of Jesus are now Rebecca, discouraged and despondent. And in despair and in grief, and, and they're willing now to throw in the towel because they feel the Lord has not heard or not answered. And I prophesy by the Spirit of the Living God. Woo! Great pain is coming. Last year, my wife reminded me. I, I got to teach, but I, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me prophetically. And right after the storm, the Lord said, get ready, something is going to happen, a virus. I remember she has it on tape, she's going to pull it up. One day we're going to share the number of things the Lord had to share prophetically when we were in the house of the Lord, and we said it publicly, it's on the recorded and stamped date. And she's going to just pull that up when our editors get to it. And uh, the Lord, and I see, Baba Kura Shia. Even last year, the Lord said something's coming. It's going to start to clear up, but something even dangerous is coming. And we see the virulent versions now reach the earth. I just pray. This year is at a critical place. Governments are putting pressure on. Is it the sign of the time? It sure is. If you're blind enough to think, that these things are not lining up. You can call it the mark of the beast or the not. That's whatever you want to call it. These things are lining up with the crumbling of man's governmental system and the ideal time for the kingdom of God's government to be introduced to the world. 
Now the Bible doesn't say everyone is going to receive. Matthew 24 and 40 says, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness unto all nations. Then the end shall come. It means, honey, this gospel of the kingdom is being declared around the world like never before. I'm telling you, whether vaccine or no vaccine, corona or no corona, government forcings and government dealings, and governments taking away the rights of people around the world, I'm telling you, this is forcing the implementation of what is going to happen. The government of Satan is being set up around the world. And Satan himself is giving the dictates and the orders. And it's being passed down from one nation to the other. You better open your eyes and see. One nation to the other is being controlled and commanded of what it should do. As it ushers in the satanic order that he always wanted to do. That old devil wants to control the world and the earth because he's a fabricated thief. He was kicked out of heaven for trying to do it. Now he's on earth trying to do the same thing. He wants the world. He wants the world system. He told Jesus in, in the book of Matthew, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you the kingdoms of this world. If you jump off this steeple, your angels will come to get you. If you declare my name, I will give you the riches and the cities. You know, that old slothful devil knew he is the prince of this world system. He has power. He has governmental authority. He has rulership still over organizations and kingdoms and nations. And he's handing down his greatest assignment. You better wake up and see. Hallelujah. Don't get mad at people. Get in the kingdom of God and its security because he's going to hand down some laws that are going to pressure governments and leaders around around the world to comply or they're going to be crushed and it's going to take a strong prayerful leader strong prayerful cabinet strong prayerful people that are going to have to pray nations through this isn't about you and i and our christianity this is about the nation satan is after the nation yeah he wants your soul but he wants your nation Hallelujah. You could be having Holy Ghost tongues. And, 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 and having your wonderful service and talking about how blessed you are. At the same time, Satan is going to the leaders of nations, uh, influencing their cabinets and senators uh, to pass abortion laws, to pass homosexual laws, to pass uh, gender identity laws, to pervert the nation, to pervert the generation from the inside out, to pass gun laws, to pass, uh, hallelujah, legislation and laws while you're sleeping, hallelujah, to ban the church, to block the church, to affect the preaching of the gospel, to close the church. They can be on motorcade, but shut down the church because the devil don't want you to be saved. That liar, he's a snake and he's a liar. Yes, I'm talking about you, you nasty lying devil. Hallelujah. How is it you can have Mordecai? How is it that you can have, hallelujah, campaign? How can you have, uh, hallelujah, uh, 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 stage performances, but then 20 people can't go into the house of the Lord? No, 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 no. So what makes people more, and it's not scientific, it's a lie from the pit of hell. What makes people more susceptible to get corona in a church where they're going to wash their hands and separate and uh, versus you close contact campaigning in your constituency with hundreds of people on motorcades. What a lying devil. Do you think we are stupid? But the saints of God, not sissified church leaders who are committees and board members who got to stay silent because their job and their money, they've sold out. I've never seen the church more quiet in my nation than ever before. Sold out! There's no scientific evidence to say you're campaigning, you're back of motorcades, you're meeting in parks, you're gathering uh, for general meetings. Makes you less susceptible to 20 people sitting six feet in the church. But Satan's agenda is to destroy 
the body of Christ. But that lying devil, his, this kingdom is eternal. You cannot stop it. You cannot hinder it. You cannot prevent it. And there are many who have not bowed down to Baal. Many who have not bowed down to this diabolical Baal. Ah, hallelujah. Jezebel, Nebuchadnezzar, ancient Egypt system. They, we have not bowed to this Greek God, to this Egyptian God system. We have not bowed to the satanic systems of this world. We are standing strong in Jesus Christ. Though it costs us everything, we will live and we will die for Jesus Christ. There is an army who is unfinched and unmoved by the antics of the devil. Because we know his destiny is hell. Angels of Satan destinies are hell. And those who have done everything in this life and think they get in the way, let me remind you, there's a hell. You let them know. Yeah, that money you stole, there's a hell. There's a righteous king. Let me get into this before I get in trouble. But I had to prophesy that. This is no game. Souls are at stake. Hundreds are dying every day, even in our weekly, in our own nation. People are transitioning from time into eternity faster than we've ever seen in the history of our nation and of our world. If you still think there's a drinking party, have a good old time, you are blinded by the prince of this world. You are lost. You are blinded. You are, hallelujah. Then why are you so serious? Thank God, this is what God called me to be, and I'm going to be serious about what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They campaigning and partying. They, they're serious about what they're doing. They stood in the rain, went and motorcade in the rain. But let us do that. They, they're listening. These fabricated devils, I'm telling you, they feel they're going to intimidate and threaten the church. They believe they're going to shut the church of Jesus Christ down. But let me tell you something. The king of kings is on his throne, and he's going to govern these nations. And he's going to govern every action that is being done. All you leaders who allow the people of God to be silenced. Oh, you've come up, like Jesus said to Paul and to Peter, you have not come up against them, you've come up against me, said the Lord. The Lord said, you, you, you know who you are. You've come up against me. Where do you live for 20 more years? There's a hell that awaits you if you don't repent and restore that which you've stolen. It's not only saying, I'm sorry. You say, I'm sorry? Uh-uh. Pay back the money you stole from God's people. The people you have victimized, reestablish them. The shutdown you did on the church, repent publicly what you've done. There's no hiding thing. You're smart enough, all of you people. You're smart enough. Why do I speak with boldness? Greatness in the kingdom. Three points. One, Matthew 18, 1 to 4. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called a little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whosoever takes the lowly position of the child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. The Lord, number one, is to be in his stable kingdom and to have equity and promotion, you have to humble yourself like a little child. I've never seen so many arrogant people in all my life. Arrogant in the church. Don't listen to nobody. No one can tell the bishop or the archbishop nothing. People have to worship them. I mean, this is not what Jesus said. The stuff that I'm seeing does not reflect the kingdom that Jesus established in the earth when he came 2,000 years ago. I'm seeing the exact opposite. Men want to be worshipped. Women prophetess want to be worshipped. They want you to sow into them. They want you to give into them. They want you to bless them. Bless their family. Bless their ministry. Bless their calling. Bless their children. Bless their uh, projects that they in. Bless their business. Bless them. Uh, where are the people? Where are you going to humble yourself and serve the people? And the worst of it all. Didn't Jesus say, when you give, don't let your right hand know what you're doing? I hate to see you cannot be a bishop and an apostle and a prophet and a pastor and give it. And every time you give, you have to show it on TV. If you cook food for people, you don't have to show that on TV. You don't have to put that on Facebook. Jesus said, you want your reward. 
He said, when you give, give in secret. So your father, which sees it in secret, will give, bless you publicly. But Jesus said, when you give publicly, you have given for man to see. You have your reward. Because you got the worship of man. And the world loves that you don't. But when you look at the kingdom of Jesus, that, that's the exact opposite. So I see these bishops, these pastors, these ministers, every time they give a little plate of food, they got to show that on TV. Hallelujah. If you're in politics, you do that because you're trying to self-promote yourself. Huh? Even then it's wrong. Even then it's wrong. Because it's a spiritual principle that will never change. Whether you're a politician, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a citizen, Jesus said, if you give to the people, yes, that's why they're flocking to you. That's why on Facebook, you have your Facebook friends. You have your face seeds. You have your friends. You have your following. You have your political following because you give food and money and things to people. So people follow you. Jesus said, that is your reward. The pat on the back. The people who said, oh, you give. You're the only one given. You're not the only one given to the poor during this time. The devil is a liar. God has reserved thousands of people in every nation who are feeding the hungry every day, clothing the naked, buying food, uh, supporting people, paying people's bills, uh, visiting people in the prison, taking food and goods. You're not the only one. Don't deceive yourself. Why? But it's a spirit of pride and arrogance on some of these men and women of God. They started out pure, but now they've gone into arrogance. They have gone into deception. They've gone into pride. They've exalted themselves. But Jesus said to men, you promoted yourself to be big, but in the kingdom, you are the least. In the kingdom, you're the least. But you who are praying, you who are fasting, you who are giving, you who are paying that tithe and offering, you who, who, who you know, feeding the hungry and clothing the naked and taking care of the poor and helping where you can. The Lord said, yes, you humble yourself. No one might know, but you're great in the kingdom. You keep rising in the kingdom. And no one might see it or know it, but they have to acknowledge you're rising in the kingdom. And they don't understand why. Why? Because you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. And the Lord has exalted you. Matthew 18 and 4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself with this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I found out if I want to be great in the kingdom, I keep humbling myself. Hallelujah. Isn't that right, darling? So they will make sure I humble myself. I make sure she stays humble. She makes sure we, I stay humble. Praise God. If no one else does it, because we, 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 we want to constantly be great in the kingdom of God. Now, man, you might not like us. Praise God. We're not going to push ourselves and, uh, and, and praise God. If we got 100 views, praise God, 500. But we're not going to be great in the eyes of man and nothing in the kingdom of God. Uh, how, if I wanted to boost this, we could boost this on Facebook, YouTube. We could get 20 friends and pay them to put this on things for sale and all of the platforms. So you would see hundreds of numbers on there. You could pay for that. That doesn't make you great in the kingdom. Praise God. You can pay and you can get a marketing uh, personnel to push your message, to push your material. You can get some church members who do marketing. Or you can pay different people to market your ministry and your message and have hundreds of people. And people think, oh, because you have numbers. No, you just marketed it. And in the eyes of people, you might be great. But in the kingdom, Jesus, I don't even know you. You arrogant, self-exalting person. You arrogant person who just want to exalt yourself and promote yourself. No, Jesus said, humble yourself and in due season, I will reward you. And that's anywhere in the world. I don't care who wins in politics or government. I keep humbling myself under the authority of the leading and the guiding of the government of the Holy Spirit and his word. And all of a sudden, he keeps uh, lifting me up. <laughs> Praise God. When I should be going now, he keeps lifting me up. Lifting me up, putting me in key positions, uh, you know, opening doors, blessing, hallelujah. And it has nothing to do with man. Man cannot open the door and man cannot shut it unless the Lord tell them to do it on my behalf. Praise God, hallelujah. And they try to touch what God is touching. Let me tell you something. My Jesus will deal with that. Matthew chapter 23, second greatness in the kingdom. I'm starting with this today. How do you get equity and justice? Why you need to be a part of this kingdom? Matthew 23, 11 to 15. But he that is great among you shall be a servant. Jesus 
Jesus said, but he that is greatest among you shall be a servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be brought low. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You see that? The kingdom of God is exact opposite. We spend most of our time trying to exalt and build up other people. Praise God. Hallelujah. I knew some brothers, man. I had some good friends and brothers in the Lord. And I'm telling you, I, we just got tired of always trying to build them. You know, we opened up doors for them. We let them preach in our ministry. We connected with all the leaders in our city. We connected with people. And they just keep getting uh, promoted that way. But anytime doors open for them, and they got opportunity to preach or teach or business venture, they don't bring us in it. They don't tell us about it. They don't share with us. And we just got tired of it. Praise God. Uh, you can't just want to be one-sided. They had a Facebook group. Not Facebook. A WhatsApp group. Man, and they just blocked it for only them to say things. What kind of kingdom person are you? You have a WhatsApp group and only you can say things on it? There's a few of them that like that. Why should I sit down and every day only you? Only you have the revelation? Only No, so I just left that group. I said, oh God, I'm going to pray for that brother and that sister because, I mean, they're not great. They don't want to be servants. They want people to worship and exalt it. And that's the... I, I, and I'm breaking the spirit of religion over the nation because that is what is seen. I booked as, as a pastor, <clears throat> as a physician, man, people call my phone, I answer as much as I can all day. Praise God. I see people, and, and it's hundreds of them, uh, you know, through the week. And, 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 and then come here, share. But I mean, you have some. Uh, people who are so self-exalted in their religion. Man, you can't book an appointment with some of these apostles. Man, what makes you so busy? Huh? I work nine to five and can teach and preach and full-time pastor, full-time apostle, traveling apostle, writing book, husband, father, taking care of business ventures. Well, what makes you so busy that when people call you, you can't even answer a phone? I went to a ministry one time and asked to speak to the guy. I had an international Yes, come in uh, to, to a church of the city. And the guy lied to us and told us he coming down. Never came down. I mean, what kind of integrity is this? You're so big and so busy that a physician and an apostle came with another apostle from around the world to bless your life and to greet you. You're so busy, you ain't have the integrity to come down outside. And I know the brother. And helped him and his family many. And I'm like, woo. But that's the common thing. People come to us and want to pray and want us to do deliverance and want us to help them and want us to feed them, clothe them, and support them. And I said, who's your pastor? And I got an idea of all those who's so busy. I said, no, 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 no. Go to your pastor. No, you want big short pastor in ministry. You want to go hide in there and be a part of the big number and say you go to this big time ministry. But when you sit, when you need prayers, when you need deliverance, when you need money, when you need counsel, nowhere to find your pastor, your bishop, your apostle, your minister, your man, the woman of God. Come on, don't be fooled in this hour. I'm not going and fellowshipping with nobody. I'm going to sow my tithe and offering and my gifts and the people who are going to help me. When trouble hit, I need to know when I call you, you could pray me through. You could stand in prayer. Not someone who so busy, so mighty, so self-exalted. You, you only can get their voice message. They only can call. They can call you back. Never call you back if they answer the phone. But when they, I see a brother and check my phone today, call me. Oh, I'm in town. Reach out to me. Brother, I didn't even see you, hear from you. I send you the flyer. You know what gets me amazed? Folk, when you share the work of the Lord with them, they don't respond. But then when they want, they call, email, text. And I must answer that brother right away now because he's in town. Come on, people of God. That's not kingdom. That's suckerish, we call it. I can say that word, right? That's a suckering spirit. You know, like a snail leash that sucks. We can't live a suckering spirit. We can't suck, 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 suck. That's not greatness in the kingdom. People who are always sucking, they're at least in the kingdom. You know what at least being They're probably not even saved because that's not the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's not kingdom. That's not the government of God operating in your life and mind. That's not the Holy Spirit 
uh, uh, fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, temperance, meekness, goodness, self-control, and the likes of these. That's someone who want to exalt their life. That's satanic. Anyone who wants to self-exalt, exalt whether their ministry, themselves, their business, uh, their family, their career, their intellect, anything. Anytime you get around them, it's always self-exalting, 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 self-exalting. They're always exalting self. And they call themselves believers? No, they're not saved. They don't have the spirit and the government of Jesus operating in your life. Whether that's a person... Whether it's a pastor, whether it's a bishop or apostle, archbishop, prelate, I've been around all. And when I, five minutes, I know if they are in the government of heaven. Five minutes I talk with them, and I can tell if they're in the kingdom. Most of them are not. That's why we're losing many of our nations. Because God is still trying to get people to home. He ain't even start doing the supernatural. You think the Lord is going to release the kingdom power to heal the sick, drive out demons, raise the dead, and arrogant people? Whoa. If people are not humble now with the little gift that God gave them now to sing, to preach, to teach, and they have people move that they're the, the ministry and, and when the Holy Spirit shows up on that if, if, if they are this arrogant so they when I travel around the world and nations we go to places with leaders hundreds thousands in, 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 the, in the service and leaders who are leading hundreds of churches and ministries and we are so on and I said Lord how did you put this God said because I humbled you and you chose to be humble before me I said, God, there's some guys who I know who have big names and big stained buildings and sanctuaries. And God said, they are least in my kingdom. I will never give them this privilege of overseeing hundreds of ministries and churches and leaders around the world. And giving them a platform and international television and radio and, 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 and following. I will never give them the revelation to write books on my kingdom, on my teaching. I would never, because they're too arrogant as it is now. This is what the Holy Spirit told me. I would never give some of them books because they're arrogant. I would never give some of them that platform to travel to Asia and throughout Africa, planting churches and works and ministries. They're too arrogant. They don't have my spirit. They are least in the kingdom. And I don't work with least. I work with greatness in the kingdom, says the Lord. I take people who are low and make them great. When people are already great, I don't have nothing much to do with them, said the Lord. So the Lord said, and whosoever exalts himself shall be, wood, shall be brought low. Verse 13, Matthew 23 and 13. I'm building this shortly. Stay with me. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. You see that? Jesus hates religious hypocrisy, and I do too. Well, why are you always talking about bishops and pastors? Why? I've grown up in those systems, Nero. And I've seen it all. It's religious and it's idolatrous and it is satanic. I'm telling you, this scribe, this Pharisee, these religious systems, I'm sure many started out. I know the heart of many. They started out with a pure heart. But by the time they got into that religious circles, by the time they got around their other denominations, hallelujah, the time they got, I remember a, a bishop I supported so well. And I'm telling you, Man, and I had an event. I will never forget the man, hallelujah, told me he had another thing to do. This is the one who I labored with, support and push. And the event that we had was in one hotel room. And I saw him walking in that same hotel, going to another event in that same room. And he knew it was there. I said, Lord... But see, the one who lifted him up behind the scene, the one who served, the one who prayed, the one who pushed, the one who supported, the one who financed, the one who organized and orchestrated the work. No, he'd rather be with the religious people, you see. He'd gotten self-exalted. And he paid with that for that in his life, you know, eventually, some years ago. And I saw him go right down. You gotta be careful! When you take on this spirit of the Pharisees, this religious order, this religion that makes you feel you're bigger than the people. You are more exalted than the people. You're so anointed. You're so Holy Ghost filled. Well, you ain't got nothing because let me tell you something. I always tell people as a pastor for over 20 years, 
Hallelujah. A senior pastor for Fifth Pain. And working with a ministry before then as a pastor. So going on to 20 years. Uh, 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 senior pastor ordained. Commission and release. I have never paid for everything in the church. So I don't own a church. God's people pay their tithe and offering. I've seen people give. Hallelujah. I've seen people sell uh, all types of items. I've seen people brought their finances and brought it to the ministry and, and paid for items or blessed. One time I had a lady come and saw the church came and said, I'm going to fix up in this whole place. Hallelujah. She put all of the curtains and the drapes. I've seen people come in and put hours of time decorating and cleaning and buying the, the, the beautiful things to beautify the sanctuary and pay their tithes and pay their offerings and give their gifts and pay. I can validate there is no man on the earth that has paid. No woman that can say my church. We don't own a church. It's God's people that pays that rent, that light, that water, that utility, and I will say it forever. That's why God hates Pharisees and scribes. That's why I hate Pharisees and scribes. What is your church? You didn't build no church. I didn't know nobody who took all of their money that they had and built the church on their own, their own church building. I don't know anybody who every week pays everything out of their pocket and don't ask for an offering or tithe or gifts from the people. Or sometimes God, people just touch, touch by what he's, what is doing. It's being done and give to ministries. So no leader should ever say my church. That's an insult to the presence of the Lord. What am I saying? You want to be low and nothing in the kingdom? Keep saying, my church, my ministry. It's God's, the Holy Spirit's anointing that comes upon you. I have no anointing on my own. This revelation is his word. I didn't write this Bible. It's his word. He just revealed it to me by his Holy Spirit for his glory for our lives and for yours, and I'm just a part of the bigger picture. It's all his bigger picture, the big plan of things. Hallelujah. When souls are saved, that's the glory of the Holy Spirit leading man to repentance. When the word is preached and people are healed, delivered, set free, eyes open, that's by the Holy Spirit's working. Hallelujah. From his word and his Holy Spirit and his drawing unto you. Hallelujah. If you're healed today supernaturally, it's by your faith pulling on it. But Jesus said, your faith shall make you whole. If you are hearing his word and you're healing your body and your eyes are open and you have delivered demonic powers are driven out of your life and the preaching of the word, it's by the power of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you bunch of hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you that you them that, that are entering to go in. I want to read that slowly now. This is very key. Most of what you don't have is because some scribe or Pharisee or hypocrite who doesn't want this kingdom message, who is not going in the kingdom, and they prevent you from going in. Watch this now. This is deep here. This is deep. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to read it again. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go in. Let me tell you something. Um, Shalei was going to help me. I was reading something to tie into this quickly. Where are you going, man of God? Well, I'm going to show you right now. Watch this now. I'm going to tie a scripture in. Listen to me very carefully. 
Listen carefully. Share this carefully. Watch this now. Matthew 23, Jesus himself says, Woe unto you Pharisees. I'm talking about the equity of the kingdom. I'm talking about how the devil and religious spirits, religious people, religious orders, uh, whether uh, governmental or I'm telling you to get to this place, do you know how much we are to fight? Do you know how much religious people, church people, business, organizational, demonic powers came to attack us so that we don't come into the truth of this kingdom and live it? I want to let you know this, this thing, I mean, watch what I'm saying now. Jesus said, I'm talking about greatness in the kingdom. I'm talking about greatness and how to get equity and justice and to prosper wherever you are because this world is going to start to shake even more. You better get into a kingdom that's stable and just and fair. And I'm, te I'm teaching you the three principles. Then I'm going to go to another passage or two and share with you and give you some more scriptures on the equity of the kingdom of God and the equity of the king. Then we're going to pray. Then we're going to pray. Bodies are going to be healed and lives are going to be transformed. Watch this. Watch this now. Please write this down. I, if you remember anything, write these two passages I'm about to share with you. Watch this. One, Matthew 23, verse 13. Watch this carefully. Jesus said, Whoa! Oh, be careful for destruction or shame upon you, scribes. Now, scribes are the writers of the law. Not touching anybody from mirror, but the lawmakers. Woe unto you, lawmakers, the scribes who write down the law and, you know, ascribe it and release it to the people. Pharisees, you teachers. These Pharisees and scribes were lawyers. They, 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 they were, 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 were people who established the, the scrolls and the teachings and they send down the laws to the people. Just like in the world today with this pandemic. Set written laws. Scribes, Pharisees, writing laws, sending it down. Or in church settings, scribes, Pharisees who create these doctrines and philosophies and you know, uh, doctrines of denomination and send it down. You bunch of hypocrites. You know why Jesus said that? Because he said, you write laws and mandate okorabashi. Watch this now. You write laws, you write legislations, you write articles, you write policies, you write procedures, you write standard operating procedures, you write all types of uh, articles, Legally and spiritually. And you put them upon people. One scripture said, Jesus said, you put it on people that you don't even lift yourself. You put laws on the people you don't operate in yourself. You establish laws that are for the people, but it's not for you and your people. You establish laws for the church folk to live by, but you yourself don't live by it. You teach laws from the scrolls and the scribes and you teach wonderful messages and you don't live by them yourselves. Woe to you, scribes, Pharisees, you bunch of hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven. You keep people from getting into the government of God through your dead religion. You keep them busy. Praise God. I'm a prophesying something. You keep people busy. You keep people entangled. You keep people in emotion. You keep people tied into promises, whether spiritually, governmentally, organizational. You have any organizational people that you can get this promotion. I can promote you. You see that? You wicked scribes. You keep making promises. You governmental, uh, political party, you keep making promises. It's one thing to make promise, but be a man and fulfill it. When I was growing up, the thing I was taught was integrity. Be a man of your word. And if you can't do it, say, I'm sorry I can't do it. I'll try again tomorrow. But be a person of integrity. Sorry I missed that call. Sorry I didn't get back to you. Sorry I didn't fulfill it. Oh, I forgot. You're human. You can forget. But fill it the next time you get the opportunity to. What's wrong with integrity? But see, they're not governed by these things. Jesus said, woe to you. You shut up heaven. I ministered to a pastor, Shalewa and I, and his wife yesterday. And I'm telling you, the word of the Lord came prophetically. And we shared some things how... They had so many people who could open up the door for them. You ever heard that before? There are some people I prophesied today. There are some ministers that could have opened the door for you. To take you to the next level. There are some people 
that could have taken your ministry to the next level. There's some people that could have taken your career to the next level. There's some people that could have taken your finances to the next level. They had it in their power to do it. They could have commissioned. They could have released. They could have ordained. They could have given you a platform. But they shut up heaven. Why? They don't want you going to the next dimension. Because the minute you go to the next dimension, you don't need them anymore. And people are threatened when you don't need them. They want you to be suckers on them. They want you to be suckers to them. I've seen it governmentally. I've seen it in the church. They want you to hold on to them because they want you to be their slaves. They want you to be their servants. They want you to believe your blessing and your anointing is tied into them. Well, if you live in a raggedy old life, how in the world your life is tied into my blessing? Why did Jesus come and bring a kingdom? Why did he say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you? And if I do that seven days a week, how is it my life is tied up to you and you don't like me? How is it that one man's life, your blessing is tied into that one man's life and you have four, five hundred, three hundred people, a hundred people, fifty people pulling on that woman all the time to get a blessing? How? Now we understand the principle. You are, you know, if it's a good leader and they're doing good and you bless them and you sow into their life, yeah, and if they give you good teachings, then the teaching should transform your life. But I'm telling you, that's it, George. But if I teach you good enough the things of the government of heaven, you don't need me. Your blessing then is in your hand. Praise God. I, you know, we've been to college. My professor never said, your destiny is in my hand. No, he taught me what I needed to know. I learned what I needed to know. And I got empowered to live life and prosper. Well, why are you going to tie me spiritually if I wasn't tied up governmentally? If I wasn't tied up educationally? Huh? It's a tactic of hell. See, Satan's plan is to keep you under his control. Witchcraft, control, manipulation, domination, intimidation, fear. Huh? To keep you as slaves and servants, never rising into your potential. Always promising you a little piece of the bone. Always promising you a little blessing if you love, if you follow me, if you listen to me, if you serve me. And Bahamas, rise up! We're about one of the only places where everyone feels government, 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 government. Huh? Go and look at the ocean full of resources. Any person could ride, a thousand of you could go out there and fish the ocean morning, noon, and night and make whatever amount you want to make. Look at the pine forests. Look at the ungrown uh, lands. Look at the sand. Look at the sun. Look at the solar. Huh? Look at the Airbnbs. What's stopping your destiny? You could compete against any hotel. Huh? Huh? Why you can't own a hotel? Huh? Why you can't own a plaza? Huh? Because you've been taught you are nothing without government. Government got to feed you. Government got to clothe you. This has been indoctrinated for the last 40 years in, in the people's mind. And it's like many other countries, sadly, African leader countries and in India. Third world. That's what makes third world third world. Because in first world nations, the people believe they have a right to prosper. They have a right to equity, to freedom. These things are, are fundamental rights of freedom and justice, equity, and opportunity for all. If I'm a law-abiding citizen, I should have equity and justice. And put on top of that kingdom principle, man, you can't stop me. But we have a people who are still in slavery. Who believe uh, this? Their MP can bring them victory. Everything the MP, man, get up and go get a job, man. Man, create something. We in a pandemic, all kind of job. If I wasn't working there, I would tell my wife every day. We see twenty jobs every day. Huh? Pandemic. Think about it. Look at all the things you're gonna need. Look how things are changing. Online, digital. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. But no, waiting for a little government job. Ain't no government job coming. spirit that the Pharisees and the scribes and Satan I believe is satanic has put something in the minds of third world people that even though the resources are there people from first world countries come to countries like ours see the money, the opportunity, the blessings, the potential and get excited. I have a guy right now, a couple of them calling from Florida one opportunity. I said wait, wait a minute you're in Florida. Why? 
What's impressing you but bringing this project here? As they see a land that God has put his hand upon. But from 73, from 65 and 73, 1973 to now, the leaders, God bless all them who were here and who were gone. They did not have the kingdom momentum to deliver what they promised. And when they got that power from 1970, independence to now, the people are still mentally in bondage. Only 10% have insight and industry to see who would have traveled and come back would have been awakened by their family to go beyond. The rest are in the same poverty, sickness, lack, barely could make it, broke, no opportunity, no potential, never rose out of poverty. The children rise up still in the same economic class that they were in, or worse, same sickness, lack of medication, lack of school supply, lack of proper roads, lack of material, lack of industry, lack of funding, lack of bank funding for people, but yet for other people they could get money, but the citizenship for broke can't even borrow 10000 20000 to get a house. Huh? Something's wrong. Why? Because some people have shut it up. And if you don't pray this prayer today, Lord, say it right now, Lord, break the shut up heavens over my life now in Jesus' name. Lord, say it again, break the shut up heavens over my life in Jesus' name. Uh-huh. You've been shut up. Huh? The heavens have been shut up. But if you're a kingdom person, that has to be broken today in Jesus' name. I don't know who shut it up over your life. Maybe Okokoraba shut up. Boy, listen here. I, I have some teachers on this Facebook page. I hope they're listening. Some of them told me. I had a teacher told me I'd never write books. Shalei and I are not going on our 10th book. Told me I'd never write. Huh? 10 books now. Almost shut me up. I had some teachers in high school. Uh-huh. Who came to class and didn't have any teacher? Blessed thing. Yes, a couple of them. I can tell them now. Because I made it in the Holy Ghost. Wicked. I hope some of them are on this. There's some wicked teachers in our system. Where they locally or where they brought them in. Who were wicked. They didn't like the people. They didn't like the children. They didn't think to tell the children dumb and stupid. Where are they now? If we so dumb and stupid, why are you here teaching? Uh-oh. Hallelujah. Tell it. Send it to them. If I dumb and stupid, well, what you doing here? Teaching me. Go find another job. Find another career. Find another country. Go. Huh? Shut up! You poor and broke and sick and disgusted, and you will come to me and tell me and my people, we dumb and we stupid and we ain't gonna make it. All the time, your children, you cheating for them to get opportunities so they could go up to college and use this country's money, resources, scholarship, and everything to send your children off to school, right? Well, you better wake up here. My eyes are open. And that's what happens when you're blind. There's some people in this country who don't like you. There's some people who don't like payments. You better get in the kingdom. They're among us. They don't like us. There's some people from other places in the Caribbean that don't like Bahamians, don't like no black people. Huh? There's some people from some other races that don't like you, don't think everyone like you. They're among us, but they're not of us, and they're not for us. I'm not being xenophobic, that's the fact. You better know how to operate in the kingdom to stay among you. They want your money, they want your resources, they want your nation's blessing, but they don't care two cents about you and the destiny of your nation. Same thing in South Africa. There's some people in South Africa, uh, some Dutch people there, they're in the people line and hate the people. Yeah, you from South Africa. Every country I've been to. North America, there's some people in North America who don't like them. Right among them, immigrants come in who don't like the people in London. They don't like London. They don't like Australia. This world is messed up. You have people who hate the people and hate the land. They're only there to suck up the resources and use it for them and their family. But they will shut up every opportunity for other people. Now what hurts me the most is when the people come in alignment with these same people who hate the nation. 
to rape and rob the people. What gets me most angry is when these Pharisees who are supposed to be teaching this kingdom message to people to empower them to get above and beyond the life's attack. Satan has put satanic attacks all around in your school and education from primary school. They call you dumb and stupid. You'll never make it. You'll never progress to nothing. You're dumb. You, 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 you. The high school people in there, teachers who say you're dumb, you're stupid, you'll never make it. Hallelujah. You go to college, you have some professors who don't like you, uh, they hate you, they see the call of God in your life, they want to flunk you, they want to fail you. Why? You are a threat. You are about to go into a realm where you will be limitless. There are some teachers, there are some professors who fail you. I have a professor in Tennessee, a Christian school. Look at my face and tell me I ain't going to make it. I won't send him 10 copies of my book right now. I'm waiting for someone from Lee to call me right now so I can send all of them. I would love to do it. Put it in their library. Huh? The law school who, who wanted and send them a copy of your CD, man. Do something great in God and send it to them. What am I saying? There are plenty of people who want to shut you out of the kingdom truth. And your place in the kingdom. Huh? They're Pharisees, they're scribes, they're hypocrites. Hallelujah. They sit waiting to shut you out. They're not going in. They don't want this kingdom message. They don't even want to serve Jesus Christ. They're lost. They don't want nothing to do with Jesus. These people who try to flunk you and fail you and talk to you about your children ain't gonna make it and dumb and stupid and your country dumb and stupid and it's a whole junk place. Guess what? They say that with their mouth, but they see the potential and want all the resources in your land. They shut it up. They don't want this kingdom message, but they don't want you listening to the kingdom message to come in the truth. Well, they, watch it. They need to go in. Watch this. Watch, watch verse 14. Read in your Bible now. I'm talking what Jesus said. Jesus said, Matthew 23. I'm moving now. They, they don't go in, and they suffer you not to go in. Many people didn't want me to come into this kingdom revelation. I had to buy books, I had to buy tapes, I had to meditate. We had to go over this over and over until we saw that we couldn't believe all these years under dead religion. I had to forgive all these pastors who I was with. I had to forgive ministries. Because you know what I learned? I learned how to lie, cheat, steal, manipulate people in these churches. That's all I learned. I learned how to move people's emotions to get them to do what I want. I learned how to, you know, you know, put on clothes and, and be exalt myself in the eyes of people. I learned the techniques and the tactics of the Pharisees. And when I came to the kingdom, I had to say, Lord, break all that junk. Woo! The lying, the thieving, the manipulation, the control, the deception, creating false perception that you're so anointed and holy and Gifted and called and great in God when you ain't know nothing. And you're only there because God needs a man or woman to occupy that time for his people. But personally, no spiritual, personal growth and development. No fruit. Just occupying. I've been around a lot of people who are just occupying. Watch this. Woe unto you, verse 14, Matthew 20, verse Woe unto you again, scribes and Pharisees, you bunch of hypocrites. For you devour widows' houses. Not going in the kingdom, not under the government of the kingdom, but looking for vulnerable, broken, uncovered people to devour their lives. Pray on the weak and the feeble and the disenchanted and the disenfranchised and those who don't have a voice. The widow, the poor widow lost her husband and, and has probably no other person to provide food, clothes, shelter, provision. These are the ones, these scribes, these Pharisees, these satanic people swoop on and for a long, for a pretense make long prayer. Huh? Dress up and, 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 and you know, they don't have no kingdom in them. They're not governed by the Holy Spirit, but for pretense. To make people think they're so deep and spiritual and powerful. Have these long prayers. Jesus said, therefore, you shall receive the greater damnation. Watch this, verse 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him two-fold more the child of hell than yourself. 
This Jesus talking now. Woe to you. Whether you're political leader, making your following twice a devil in hell. Jesus said that's what you do. You lawmakers, you you religious spiritual leaders, you, you go to the land to raise up what they call what sons they, or daughters or your own son and daughter. And when they come in position, they twice as wicked as you. Look at this. This is this thing fulfilled in your eyes. Matthew 23 and 15. I know some people who have a predecessors and they are worse. I mean, sorry, they have successors and they are worse than twice the worst, twice as wicked, twice as corrupt, twice as evil, twice as vindictive, twice as oppressive than their leader. Now watch this. This is tying into Matthew 13. What am I talking about? And 19. Get your Bible. Matthew 13 and 19. What am I talking about? Equity in the kingdom. Listen, I can preach out like this as long as Jesus gave me strength. Equity in the kingdom of God. You don't come into the kingdom of God, this world system under the government of Satan's rulership is going to crash down. We are here today. I know I'm here today because I tapped into this through Jesus Christ through salvation, through the blood of Jesus, through much prayer, through the word of God and applying this by the strength with the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm here today. If not, Satan and his angels and his cronies and his followers and his agents and humans that live in the kingdom of Satan would have destroyed me by now because Satan's kingdom is, you know, his tentacles are in every industry around the world. He is manipulating the leaders of nations and the organizations, and he's planted so many of his tactics in the earth. From a child is born, they're coming in a world that Satan has intricately, purposely, strategically planned to destroy their destiny and their purpose. And if they don't have the blood of Jesus and the kingdom of God operating in their life, the protection, the covering, the opportunities of the kingdom. This old world ain't going to give it to them and us. That's what I'm saying. Let's get into this. Watch this scripture now. Share this, please. Like this, share this. Watch this. Well, why are you always teaching the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom? Why? I can tell you right now. Every time the kingdom is preached, Satan comes directly. Watch this. Matthew 13 and 19. Jesus is saying this. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes. Okay, now listen. I told you at the beginning, there's some warfare that comes with this. That's all right. We're going to live this kingdom, preach it and teach it. But let me tell you something. Satan, nowhere in the Bible do you see where Satan, the evil one, comes directly other than when the kingdom is preached. Go to your Bible. I'm going to show you. See, Satan ain't concerned about you preaching on faith. He's not concerned about you preaching on love. He's not concerned about you getting the message of, oh, you're going to get your blessing. You get a house, a car, and a prophetic word about some, you know, material thing you're going to get. He don't mind that. Get that. But when you start teaching the message of Jesus' kingdom and his government that is eternal, that has kicked Satan out because he wanted to overthrow it, that destroyed him when Jesus came in the earth and took the keys of the kingdom back from him, and that's going to finish him off in the future. He hates this message. He hates us being shared. He hates us being discussed. And that's why uh, the, spy, the scribes and the Pharisees and the hypocrites, they try to do everything. Satan has an intricate system called religion and denomination and governmental systems and satanic organizations that block men and women out and keep them busy with sports and entertainment and social clubs and personal clubs that keep them away and distracted campaigning. When it's not that, it's something that is, is, is a cycle of things that keep you busy and occupied. And even in the church, a bunch of activities, picnic and popcorn and all types of things they're teaching on and God knows what, it's, what, all, what else is being said. I don't know because I don't listen too much. But I know one thing. If the kingdom was being taught, if God's government was taught to people in the earth, we have a saved nation. How could a nation have professed 70% Christians and they have more death by murder and abortion 
and destruction and poverty and gambling and immorality and sweethearting and perversion. Huh? How can it be? They're religious. They're not kingdom living. They attend mass and church service and, 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 and Sabbath school and all these things. But the lifestyle doesn't line up with kingdom living. The life doesn't show that Jesus is governing their personal action and their soul seven times a week, seven days a week. But Jesus said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom, he didn't say, when you hear the word of faith, when you hear the word of, you know, you're going to get blessed, when you get hear a special word about, oh, you know, your miracle. He said, when anyone hears, I'm stressing this, I'm repeating this for, for emphasis, you got to get it. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, like what we've been teaching, like what we're sharing, you become a threat to Satan. Your marriage becomes a threat to Satan. Your family becomes a threat to Satan when you get this kingdom message. When you start hearing this and living this and reading this and studying it, then Satan comes himself because he ain't concerned about if you get a message on faith. He's deeply concerned if you hear the message of the kingdom and you understand it. It says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Well, I don't want to listen to that Dr. Carly. He always talks about kingdom, kingdom. Let me go scroll through this here. They go find one prophetic word. Let me get one word that, you know, bless me. And, and woman of God, I see you getting the car. And I see that bill being paid off. Come on. Then you will need more bill paid off next week. And the following week. And for the next 10, 15 years. For 50 years, you're going to need your bills paid every week. You can't live off that. That's the problem I have. I love prophecy. I'm a prophet. But I have concern that prophecy, the spirit, revelations, I think 14 said the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. It means when I prophesy or I hear prophecy, it must lead me. Find up for me, Shalewa. It must lead me to Jesus. She's going to find out and confirm where it's from. I'm not, I can't live of your prophetic word every day of my life for the rest of my life. I can't live of your miracle word every day. I can't even live of a miracle I had last year. I can't live of a supernatural encounter five years ago. I need to walk by faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I must walk by the laws of my government and my kingdom. I must live by his laws because you ain't going to be around every day. You ain't going to be around every week. You're not going to be around every month. You're not going to be around this year and next year and the following year and five years from now. Uh, I can't trust on your word only. I can't depend on your life only. Give me the keys. Give me the principles. Give me the faith. Give me the understanding. Show me the way so I can get the kingdom for myself and implant it in my life. And every day I can walk a miracle. Every day I can walk in victory. Every day I can walk in peace. Every day I know my rights in the kingdom of God. That when I pray, hallelujah, what I bound on, bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What I loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I'll have the faith to believe. I'll have the faith to receive. I'll have the faith through the word to walk with my God. I don't want your prophetic word every day, every day, every day. You will become a God to me. I don't want anybody being under manipulation before. I don't want anybody being a God over my life. I don't want anybody I got to string every day to, to book an appointment to hear a word from the Lord through your life. I'm not lazy. Give me the word of God. And if you want to give it to me, tell me where to start. And I'm telling you where to start. Start with kingdom of God. Start off with Jesus as King and Lord. Learn everything about him. Because his lordship and this kingdom that I'm teaching you. And listen, you're going to be all right. You can give your family something that's everlasting. I can't live off just some, you know, preacher. I can't live off some prophet's word. I need a word that's everlasting that I can live by with certainty. I can look my family in the eyes and say, we're going to make it because I got the word here. We're going to come through this pandemic because I got the word. We're going to stay home because I got, I got something that works. And if it doesn't work, we don't have nothing else to stand on. We got something that is sure. 
Son, if you get this, daughter, if you get this, I'm going to give this to you so that by 7, 8, you know the kingdom of God. That, listen, you can go anywhere in the world, whether I'm here or not. I pray to be here, but I'm going to give you something that's everlasting and eternal that you could never shake. Praise God. That's the greatest gift you can give your kids. You give them 50000 100000 to go spend in a secular university that's going to tell them Jesus doesn't exist. Satan and, and, you know, transsexual and transgender is the new wave now. And we, we spend all this money on that. Why not invest in the kingdom that's free and give them really something that's eternal? But back to my point. Jesus said, when anyone does not hear, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, which what has been sown in his heart. Now, why is Satan so deeply concerned about the kingdom message? Why does he show up when you are prophesying? Why does he show up when you're praying all night prayer and all morning prayer? I've never seen anywhere where Satan shows up other than him. When you get this message of the kingdom, this is being revealed. All of a sudden, here comes Lucifer. Here he is, right here, trying to see how to stop this, but he's defeated. He doesn't want the truth of this kingdom to come into your life. You will know exactly the strategy. You will know how to be empowered. You will know how to be blessed. You will be free from dead religion. You will be free from satanic organizations and orders and structures. You will be. You will get your power from the true source. You don't have to go to share this quickly. You don't have to go to some demonic source. You don't have to build alliance with a bunch of friends. I don't have to join some society, some organization. I don't have to be some uh, fraternal order to get power and to be around people, uh, to get promotion, to get an edge, to get an advantage, to do something great. I have the kingdom of God. Now, I don't blame everyone. Now, hear me now. I'm not judging people for what they didn't know in the past. People made decisions because, you know, they thought they were doing something good. So don't, under, don't misinterpret me. I'm not judging anyone. And I'm saying, as you come to the kingdom, you can renounce everything else. <laughs> Praise God. You can say, Lord, I renounce all, you know, even me. I had to do it. I said, Lord, I renounce all fraternal orders. I have renounced every organization, institution, governmental structure that I know does not come from the kingdom of God. I renounce every group and organization, every place, every person that I made out of ignorance because I thought I was doing some good, but when I come into, came into the knowledge of the kingdom, I realized my true power, my true identity, my true source is in the king and in his powerful government and that I can rise up I found myself, praise God, I was so lost and blind, even in church till I came into it. And when I came into it, I realized, oh my goodness, there's nothing that could stop my progress now. I have the keys to the kingdom. I have access to the kingdom of heaven. I have access to a government that works, that if I apply the laws, I get results, and ain't nobody can stop it, praise God. My neighbor can't stop it. My enemies can't stop it. In fact, he said, when you are at peace, he will even cost your enemy. When you, when your ways please the Lord, he will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. Praise God. When you're pleasing the Lord, your enemies got to love you. Why? They can't do nothing to stop you. They can't do nothing to hinder you. They can't do anything to block you. Now, you better get this today. They can't curse you. The curse will bounce off. Hallelujah. The curse causeless will not come. Diseases will come. No weapon form against you shall prosper. It bounces off your life. Praise God. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. You begin to live. Praise God. And even if Jesus said he could call you home, what you've done for Christ, the work is finished. You've finished your assignment. You've done your work. And he ends, uh, accepts you into his eternal kingdom and gives you a powerful place to rule and reign with him forever. There is no defeat. There is no loss. There is no loss in the kingdom of God. It's just so powerful. No one can stop the amount I can make in this earth. No one can stop me from the amount of books I want to produce. No one can stop me with huh, the, the, the revelation I want to release to the earth. No one can stop my creative ideas, my intellectual growth, my study, my development, all my family. It's in my hands now through the Holy Spirit. It's true. Whatever he calls me to do, 
through. I can walk in that unhindered. And I don't have to blame anybody anymore. Whether my daddy or mother wasn't there. Whether my grandparents wasn't there. I'm not mad at the teachers who said I would be dumb and never make it. In fact, I, you know, I shout out to them every so often when I see them. Praise God. I bless God for them. They're watching the ministry. They're sharing. They're seeing what God is doing. The same ones. Praise God. The same leaders who said I would never make it. Uh, there was a lady who was a, a supposedly prophetess or something, who said, I would never make it. Hallelujah. They said, I would never amount to anything. She said, I would never travel the nation. Well, look at my passport. I've been in too many nations, and I'm waiting for this pandemic to end. We'll be in more. Praise God. And if we're not there physically, our power and glory TV, not TV, is in over 100 nations around the world. Praise God for the last two years, and our books are around the nations. So we're a nation, and that woman, I don't even see where she is, but I love her. Praise God. I mean, there's some witches who the devil will send to say you will be nothing and never make it. How could you say that? Because they feel they have power in the spirit to do it because they know you're ignorant. But when you rise up in kingdom, hallelujah, you're going to stop letting some old devil who call himself bishop or an apostle or prophet if they're not real. There's some fake ones out there. There's some real ones too. But there's some fake ones out there who are going around cursing people. Making them feel they'll never be nothing. Who gives you any authority, devil? Praise God. Those devils don't have authority to stop what God has in your life. So Jesus said, when this gospel of the kingdom is preached, then comes Satan. Matthew 5 and 19. Let's move quickly. We're talking about this kingdom government. This is powerful stuff. Uh, Matthew 5 and 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, I'm knocking a lot of people today, but let me tell you, I say it out of love. Don't take me wrong. There are a lot of pastors and leaders and ministers and ministries have been around for a long time. They are least in the kingdom of heaven. There are some Bible schools I've been to that lease in the kingdom of heaven. Why? They never taught. Watch this now. I can read it from there. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach man so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do, do, whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, whoever teaches the laws that govern the way his kingdom operates shall be called great. My God, let me tell you something. If you don't feel great, if you don't look at the rest of 2021 and say, I can be great in the kingdom. I have the tips, the tools, and the secrets. Don't mind what's going on around you. Don't mind those who are breaking it. God said they're the least. They're going to pay for it. Don't mind those who are teaching people uh, contrary to what the word of God says. Don't mind them who, you know, living what's contrary. The Lord said there's a price. But to be great in the kingdom, I have a disclaimer. Shalewa and I read the scripture, praise God. And we in our family and ministry, we, we are trying to be great in the kingdom. We are trying to do and teach these things. And the word of God says so we can be great. I don't just come here, just a disclaimer, George. I don't come here because I'm just a good person. And I love always doing this. No, praise God. I do this because I know it's a principle. As we do this every day and we teach this, the Lord keeps increasing us and making us great in his kingdom. Amen. What is this kingdom of God, a government of God? Romans 14 and 17. For the kingdom of God is not in what you meet and drink, but it's righteousness. The government of God is about righteousness. Jesus is righteous. I don't care how people have, you know, taught us or showed us how to do a little sin and get away with it. You know, you learn all these things. You learn how to sin and get away with it. You learn how to go to church and, and still do a little stuff and hide from the pastor. And you can hide from the deacon board and and around them, you could be the saints. No, I've learned all that church stuff. Praise God. I learned how to lie and preach. I learned how to steal and, and, and preach. I learned how to, you know, live all kind of raggedy lives and still, you know, you know, play the part for two, three hours in the church service. So the Lord 
rope that has delivered me and that showed me that's not how you're going to be great in my kingdom. That's not what I want you to do. Now you can keep doing that and folk around who think you're so anointed, so blessed, and so called, and so filled with the spirit, and so special, and so gifted. And in my eyes, I'm crying, the Lord told me, because I know when you leave this arena with these people, your life is a mess. And if you die, you go into hell. Can you imagine? I was at a place in church serving the Lord, and if I had died, I would have gone to hell. Praise God. Some of you can testify of it. I would have gone straight to hell. Because why? You know, my life was in line up to righteousness. And the key element of God's government is righteousness. Uh, equity. Doing what is that of integrity. And you know, there are so many organizations out there purporting that, you know, you, you, do this and you'll be persons of integrity is a lie. I've never seen, there's no, there's no organization, there's no group, there's no body. I've been around so many of them and around the world, there's many more. I know I haven't seen all, but there's none that I've found that can produce righteousness in your life. When I salute the men who have basketball programs and sport programs, my wife always shared it. We support some of that. But we look at it and say, if you get these guys on Saturday to play basketball, that's good. That teaches them a sport and gives them physical activity. That doesn't produce necessarily righteousness in their life. The kingdom of God is the only, the government of God, and the laws of God through the Holy Spirit is the only organization, only person, only group that can produce what is integrity in the hearts of people. I learned some from some prisoners. There's some guys who've gone into prison and they told me when they go into prison it makes them worse. That's why they learn how to teeth more. They learn from other prisoners. It doesn't reform them. You know, they're in there right now. I've spoken to people who talk with, you know, persons who've gone to jail or who've gone to jail and in and out. And those people, I'm telling you, when they go to jail, they learn how to lie better. They learn how to teeth better. Thank you. Yes. And they learn how to lie even more. They learn how to teeth. They learn how to break in houses even better. They learn how to set up their criminal activities better because they went into prison and they learned it because prison doesn't produce righteousness. Only the kingdom produces righteousness. Peace. Only God's government can give you an I peace. I'm at peace now because the government of God is operating in my life. If I didn't have my eyes set on Christ and on his word on a daily basis, I would have faltered. I mean, colleagues are dying, friends are dying, those around are dying. I mean, political unrest, instability, governments are fighting and pressuring people. I've never seen it. Hallelujah. And in trying to protect your family, I would have been lost. If I didn't have the kingdom of God operating in my life, I would not have had peace. I would not have joy. This stuff that's internal. Notice the kingdom is internal. All of the other governments are external. External promises. You're going to get a house, car, land, property, education. But the kingdom of God, the government of God promises internal change first. Internal blessing. Internal stability, internal increase, internal value first. Now, once you get it, it goes from inside out. Just a few scriptures. Get ready to pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need somebody to share this. I need somebody to invite. I need somebody to get back on here quickly, 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 quickly. Because we're going to read these scriptures, then we're going to pray. We're going to go back over this later on. Psalm 45 and 6, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of the kingdom is a right scepter. Another translation says, your throne, O God, endures forever and ever, and justice is the scepter of your kingdom. Another translation says, thou, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of equity is the scepter of thy kingdom. Woo, glory to God. 
Ain't no false promises in Jesus' government. No false promises. No lies. Sorry. No lies. No deception. No mismanagement. No corruption. No underhanded deals. No giving deals to your friends and your family. No schisms. No lying and saying things are good when they're not. That's the lying system of Satan. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a deceiver. He makes you feel that everything is good. Oh, the economy is good and it's not. Oh, we're going to build new hospitals and it never happens. Oh, we're going to build new schools and it never happens. Oh, we're going to build airports and it never happens. Oh, people are going to be less. It never happens. It's a new day. It's about your future. It's about tomorrow. It's about next week. All these promises. Jesus' kingdom is not like that. And I tell you, if these men were to really connect themselves with the righteousness of the government of the kingdom of God, then they probably would be able to deliver these promises. Maybe they would be able to transform people's lives if they humble themselves and, and submitted their lives to the government of God's law. They more than likely would be able to fulfill it because we have many examples of King David, of Hezekiah, of many great leaders, Deborah, Esther, in the scripture that were righteous leaders that rose up to prominence and, and blessed the nation and brought peace and prosperity and hope. I believe it can happen. Don't get me wrong. I'm not just all doom and gloom. I just believe that if people make promises, if they align themselves with trying to live God's kingdom way, Jehovah's kingdom laws, then they will have a chance of being able to fulfill these things. They can do it. Next verse on the kingdom of God, equity and justice of the kingdom. Psalm 99 and 4. The king is mighty. He loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob you have done what is just and right. Or the King James Version. The king's strength also loveth just judgment. You have established equity. You execute judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Man, God is about equity and justice and fairness. Why am I teaching this? I'm getting ready to close. Because people have been disenfranchised and they need the teaching of justice. Wherever you go in the world, you need this teaching. You need this. You know, just being black. And we have wonderful white friends and partners all around the world. But I, I just see it. Every day there's injustice against blacks. In, in the Americas. I mean, it's not going well. And Europe, I mean, it's blacks are being mistreated and unfairly treated. And I prayed this week and I said, Lord, what is it? The Lord spoke to my heart. He said, Son, as long as my kingdom is not in place, even a black lives matter, all lives matter, no lives matter, it's never going to change because there is no law that could legislate in a racist heart. So love. You can set all the laws you want. There's no law that's going to prevent racist police officer, a bitter, angry, vicious officer who hates people of other races other than his own self exalted, prideful, white supremacist mindset to stop anybody, black, young, a black woman, a black boy, a black man, a black girl, and show them equity. If you don't have the kingdom of God operating in your life, you're in trouble. There are two laws. And the laws of the kingdom, if it's not in the hearts of these people, there's no law that's going to cause a judge to make a verdict on one black male for doing a minor crime without sending him to jail for the maximum penalty and the same white or Asian sending them for a tenth of that same time for the same crime or worse. Because there's a justice system that exists in this world, in the hearts of men that are not kingdom. There's no law any nation can pass that can stop a young girl, a young boy, a doctor, a nurse from pulling out 
fetal remains of a young baby and snuffing out their life and calling it legitimate. It's the law. Because the kingdom law is the king is watching over every decision and it must get into our hearts to transform those decisions. Psalm 11 and 7, for the Lord is righteous. See, man is unrighteous and he will always be unless he comes to a righteous God. I cannot be righteous outside of knowing a righteous God and knowing his righteous laws and trying to apply them to my life. And hopefully with his strength, I can live up to this every day getting better. You and I the same. Because the heart of man is wicked everywhere around the world. Black, white, Hispanic, Native American, Indian, Southeast Asian, Indian, Native people, indigenous Indians, mix all, all the heart, the mind, and the motives in not surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and His Word and the Holy Spirit is evil, is wicked, is self-centered, is self-fulfilling, is self-gratifying, is do what thou will. That's the satanic motto. Do what thou will. Alexander Crowley, the leading Satanist and Freemason of this decade, created in his philosophies that this philosophy, do what thou will, is the, the leading philosophy of the entertainers in Hollywood and the musicians. It's a satanic message. Do whatever your body and your life wants to fulfill. It's satanic at its core. But Jesus' kingdom says in Psalm 11 and 7, For the Lord is righteous. He will never change. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. Psalm 17 and 2, May my vindication come from your presence. Lord, I speak this today. May the vind Lord vindicate your people today. Wherever the injustice of this world system, the injustice of work, or promotion, or governmentally, or organizationally, or ministerially, or whatever means there has been an unjust cause against anyone on this platform, or your people. We ask, Lord, you to vindicate us. May your eyes see what is right. Psalm 33 and 5, the Lord loveth righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his loving devotion. Psalm 98 and 9, before the Lord... For he comes to judge the earth. Uh, the Lord is going to judge this wicked world and its system. I don't know when and I don't know how long from now. It has started already. You know a lot of the things we see today is because of the judgment and the wrath of God. And some of it is self-causing. But the Lord one day, Jehovah, Adonai, Elohim, the Lord, the creator, the owner of heaven and earth, the king, he is coming, Psalm 98 and 9, says, For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with a right standard and the peoples with equity. Circle that there. Circle. Listen, 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 listen. When you pray this week, I need you pray, <clears throat> praying these scriptures. The Lord is coming and he's going to judge the earth, but he's also going to judge the world system. Not by the tactics of man. He's going to judge the world with his own right stand. Like only him can. Praise God. Only him can judge the world and judge people fairly. Only him can look at each one of our lives and see what we did and what we didn't do and why we did it and judge it according and align with his word and give everyone a fair and equal judgment. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Psalm 103 and 6, Psalm 145 and 7. He executes justice for the oppressed. Let me tell you, if you are oppressed today, get ready for a victory in your life, I prophesy. If you're being oppressed, if you're being discarded, if you're being pushed aside, get ready because if you were pushed aside unfairly, I can talk about many times I was pushed aside unfairly, but the Lord vindicated my cause and he executed justice when I asked him to, and you can as well. And he brought deliverance. That's what deliverance is. He executed justice. 
from the oppressed and gives food to the poor, the Lord sets the prisoners free. Jeremiah 23 and 5, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will rise up for David a righteous branch, and he will reign wisely as king, and will administer justice and righteousness in the land. Psalm 45, 6, Thy throne of God is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Psalm 72 and 1. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. Deuteronomy 32, 3 to 4. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Isaiah 42 and 4. He shall not fail nor be discourage till he have set judgments in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law that's a prophetic word the isles of the bahamas in the caribbean wait for his law praise god that's a prophetic right there isaiah 9 and 7 of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end this began by saying unto us a child is born unto us a son is given of the increase of his government of his government of his government not some old dead religion of the increase of his government and of peace. There shall be no end. He's coming with a government upon the throne of David. This is the throne he will sit on. It makes him king upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it. He's established his government and his kingdom in heaven. He's doing it in the earth. He's going to establish it with judgment. Hallelujah. It's not some old, oh, what a mighty God, a loving God. Yes, he's loving, but he's also God of judgment. He's going to establish his kingdom with proper judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. This is henceforth. This is 2,000 years ago when Jesus came in the earth. Isaiah prophesied of Jesus coming and he came and that's what he did. So you know what that means? It is operational now. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Deuteronomy 10 and 18. He that executed the judgment of the fatherless and widow and loved the stranger and given him food and raiment. Jude 1 and 15, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed. Oh my God. Psalm 89 and 14, justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Another a king, New King James Version says, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Mercy and truth go before your face. We're done. As we close, we pray with you today. And I'm going to close with what I began with last week. Matthew chapter 20. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, Go, you go into the vineyard too. And whatever is right, I will give you. Jesus is talking about a parable where he's hiring. His master's hiring people. He sent some out. He went back out, saw others idle, not working. He gave them a job and sent them to the vineyard. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour, and then three hours later, the ninth hour, and then the eleventh hour, two hours afterwards, he saw another set of people free. He was just hiring people that day, this master. And uh, he said to them, what do you stand by idle? Verse 7 of Matthew chapter 20, they said to him, because no one has hired us, he said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the foreman, call all the laborers, and let's pay them their wages beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour, each of them came, each of them were given the same denarius. Can you imagine? This laborer, this owner of the property called the landlord to say, I mean the foreman and say, pay everyone, and they got the same payment. And I'm telling you, you know what could happen here. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them received the same amount of the diary. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, 
who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. That's what we would say. <laughs> but I, but he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did I not agree to pay you for a denarius? Verse 14, take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with my belongings to me, or do you grudge my generosity? Jesus is saying, the laborer, the owner of the property said, why are you so wicked? It's my money. If I want to pay each one of you whatever amounts, it's my business. If I want to pay you who came 7 a.m. in the morning, and the person who paid works 3 p.m. in the afternoon, the same pay, even though you got up at 4 o'clock, it's my money. I can do what I want to do with it. Jesus said in verse 16, so the last will be first and the first shall be last. This parable talks about the equity in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter where you are or what you've done. If the Lord has called you in this hour to do what he's called you to do, he is equal and fair. You know, some people out there feel they have a special lesson that only them going to get. The Lord is not like that. He is fair and equal and just, and he rewards each of them. Every one of us according to our working in his kingdom. That's why I'm so excited about this kingdom message. It's the only hope that I've found for freedom, equity, and justice in this world. Everyone has an equal opportunity based on abiding by the principles of the kingdom found in the Bible, abiding by the laws that are there. We're going to be successful. We're going to live and we're going to be ultimately judged by how we apply these laws of the law of the kingdom of Christ in our life uh, and how we apply his government to our lives. Other than that, I am excited, but I'm so saddened as well because I know this world system, many who didn't deserve to die and to suffer, many who were in prison, who they shut out, many who didn't have opportunity for education or proper health care, an equal opportunity to a job to provide for their families. Because we have an unjust world and an unjust system that governs it. But I pray that those who will listen and watch as you are blessed, that you share this message. How can you be a part of sharing this kingdom? Just the way you are. Just use your personality. Tell someone that a kingdom exists. Give someone hope. More than just a political leader, more than an election scheme and plot and strategy that we hear every year that just benefits a few. We want the Lord to really rise up if we can. If he can, there are leaders right now, I'm praying politically, who the Lord can just touch and really, really surrender to kingdom principles and really make a difference. I'm not saying it can happen. There are some leaders even leading up to this election. If they humble themselves and seek the face of the Lord and really commit to carrying out equity and justice according to the scriptures, according to the kingdom law, they will bring a transformation to this nation and any other nation like never before. But those who are going knowing that they are not going to fulfill the words they've committed to at least even attempt to bring equity and justice and fairness to the society. They really don't enact the laws that give people equal opportunity and hope and prosperity for all. Then the Lord knows their hearts. I pray you do pray and ask you to pray them out and fuck them out. Or in, whatever one, I'm not saying any side. Vote out or vote in based on your own hearts and your own conviction this week. And even when it's over this week, you're going to still need to learn how to trust the Lord. You're going to need to go into His Word like never before. Because either one who gets in is going to take some transition in or out. So let's pray today. Father, right now I thank you that you have your people here who are listening. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for their families. Everyone listening, I just pray the Lord to bless your life and your family and your ministry, your call and your destiny. I just pray that this kingdom message and this kingdom series, and this, this message on the government of Christ Jesus and the equity and the stability of it, 
touches your life, and that it blesses your life. Thank you for staying on this long time. It's a great investment. Thank you for investing in your life and your family, your your community, and, and your own spiritual growth. I thank you for it. Lord, I speak a blessing. I speak hope with the people who are hopeless, who are in despair with everything they're seeing and, and feel that there's no hope. But I pray today this message reaffirms that there is hope in Christ Jesus. He is the only one who can bring hope to this world. He is through Christ and through his death and his burial and his resurrection. If you don't know him as Lord today, I pray you get to know him. You enter John chapter 3, said, Jesus said to Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot even enter or begin to experience this kingdom life. It's real. It's, it's eternal. It's tangible. This kingdom is tangible. I pray a blessing. I pray today. Every power that is shutting up your heavens over your life. I say it not by my power. I have no power. I say it by the power of the authority that's in Jesus' name. I say it in the power and the authority that comes with all of the governments of heaven's rights to execute it. Him as judge, he makes the final decision. I pray and stand in agreement that every curse that hindered you from prospering, increasing, growing, showing forth the greatness in your life be broken. I pray every entanglement, every entanglement that you got into knowing or not knowing, every vow pledge covenant that tied you into locking up the heavens of your life be broken in Jesus' name. I pray that everything your mother, your father, your sister, your generation would have had in their lives that hindered you from increasing be broken today in the name of Jesus. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. I declare your freedom. I declare your family's freedom. I declare your decree of children's freedom. I declare your business freedom. I declare your ability to think, create, and increase right now come upon your life. Why? Because you've heard this message of the kingdom. I pray your greatness in the kingdom begin to rise. I pray your understanding in the kingdom becomes clearer. I pray your role in the God's overall kingdom be made manifested and you will do great exploits. The Bible said Isaiah chapter 9, they that know their God shall be strong and shall do great exploits. I declare you do great exploits this week by the name of Jesus. And I declare also that this message will not be snatched out of your heart. Like Matthew 13 said, by that wicked one, Satan. That that wicked one will not come to teach this word out because you have got it planted in your heart and you understand it. Praise God. And you rise up in the greatness God has called you to be. I declare covering of healing and protection. Wherever you're sick, I command death to go in the name of Jesus. I command it now. By the authority of Jesus' name, death, you cannot touch these bodies until we finish our purpose. I declare sickness, you got to go. You No weapon formed against us shall prosper. I declare death and disease, go now! By the authority of the risen Jesus, by the authority of the King who created these bodies, by the authority of the resurrected Lord, who has authority in his blood to heal, set free, and by his stripes we are healed. You sent your word to heal our diseases. I command sickness to go. We have to live until we finish the assignment of the Lord. We speak boldly. We stand on your promises. Every spirit of discouragement, Satan, I command you now to lose your power. You strong man that wanted to put opposition, to bring fear, to bring hopelessness, to bring despair, to bring depression. I break it down in the name of Jesus. Come on, break. I break depression. I break depression. That, that, that fear that wants to hold you down, that fear that wants to make you feel the Lord is not going to answer you. Those dreams that trouble you, those are words that people share that trouble you, that, that those, those even self-inflicting thoughts. <clears throat> That trouble you, that make you feel it's oh God, you're gonna lose your job, that you're gonna suffer, <laughs> that you won't be able to take care of your family in your home, that the Lord has not heard your prayer, that He's not seen your cries. I pray that lie to be broken in Jesus' name. For the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, Salaba. What He promised us, He's gonna fulfill it. Praise God. What He promised, He's gonna fulfill. That which he said to us, I believe his word, heaven and earth will have to dissolve in absolute space if he lies. 
You cannot lie. I stand in your word. Come on, touch and agree with somebody. I touch and agree with everyone. Whatever your prayers, begin to pray right now. All we need is two or three touching and agreeing. And we are here. Shalev is here. Our ministry is here. And you who have said, just touch and agree. That's all he said. In the kingdom of God, you don't need a whole lot of person. In the government of God, you just need two or three witnesses. And it is established before the court of heaven. Before the king of kings. Just bring three witnesses. So I think we have three here. So I stand in agreement for everything that we need for our families and our homes to be done now in Jesus' name. I declare there's no more missed opportunity. I declare there's no more missed goals. I declare there's no more pushing me to the side. In the name of Jesus, I declare that old spirit that keeps wanting to push me aside. I declare those folk who just want to keep pushing me aside. I declare every situation that want to push me aside, I de- you know, push me to the side. I break it now. I will not be shut up. I will not be pushed aside. I will not be victimized. I will not be oppressed. I will not be suppressed. I will not be quiet. I will not be chained out. For the Lord has risen me up to be in his kingdom. And I use the kingdom laws and authority to rise up in the greatness now and for you in Jesus name in Jesus name yes Lord I see prophetically the Lord is removing fear some of you you're so nervous on the inside you're so fearful you're so fearful about tomorrow so fearful about this week I want you to share this let the people of God know that who really trust the Lord do not be afraid do not be dismayed, for the Lord is on your side. I am speaking prophetically to someone. The Lord is on your side. I don't care what you've done. I don't. You have, I, and especially today, if you are on this page today, you have stayed and you have prayed and you have said, Lord, today I've heard this kingdom message. And I might know a lot about it. I'm going to study it more, but I stand on enough today to believe that your kingdom is one of equity and fairness. I will not fear. I will not fear for my life. I will not fear about disease. I will not fear about losing job and losing opportunity. I will not fear about where the finances will come from my family. I trust in a God who is equal and fair and just and he knows my needs. He knows my needs. He knows what I need to live. He's not unrighteous to forget all the labor of love I've done. Everything I've done in his name. He's not unrighteous to forget. He has not forgotten me. He's not like some of these people who will cut you off when they get power. He's, he knows what you've done for his name. And he remembers them. Because they're before him. And he's going to reward you. Even if it was just a cup of water you did in his name. He said, I want to remember it. I'm going to bless you for it. Because you seek me. I prophesy to you today. I prophesy to your family today. I prophesy over your life today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, we're out of time, but not out of word. We can go on this for, for hours to come. I'm just going to stop there and transition. We love you. Shalewa and I love you. Why do we teach so hard? Because, we, you know, we love you. And we know Satan has a kingdom, and we're not, uh, we're not, we're not going to let the devil steal your life. Um, we're not going to let him keep you in ignorance and darkness as to what his power is and what he's trying to entangle me with. That's why I can speak to you, because I had to study these things and learn from experience the things that the devil has said to destroy your life and mine. So I say it not out of hate. Please don't take it as judging, man of God. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not saying this out of judgment or shame. I'm not here to do it. I just speak prophetically because lives are at stake. And every day I look in the paper and I see people dying. I wonder if they made it into eternity. We have no time to play with this gospel. People are dying and going to hell. If you have relatives and you have not shared this video, or maybe tell them in your own way about really making a commitment to serve Jesus Christ, if they die, you're going to feel so terrible. You know, I know I've tried to share with my family as much as I can. If they want to hear it, I've done so much to make sure that my family and those around me, I have shared what I believe. And, uh, you know, and you can do too. But... If they don't want to accept it, I, I'm saddened by it because, you know, I know it's off my hands. And I pray everyone who hears this gospel makes it. And if you want to share this with a friend, a family, a loved one who doesn't know Jesus Christ and, and, and needs to know him, you can go ahead. Please share this with somebody. Share this with a friend, a family member, group. Let them know that Jesus loves you. And we ask for your friend, Shalewa and I and our family and Kingdom Apostolic Ministry. We ask for your prayers. We need your prayers too. We 
we, we're not some superhumans. We need your prayers of you and your support and your love as much as we try to show you support and love as well. And we do this together. Some of you, uh, to you. Ellie, God bless you. Love you. Faithful, faithful. Thank you for you. Faithfully reaching out and supporting us. It feels good when we see you. And we wish we could see all of you by the face one day, but, you know, praise the Lord one day. We ask you, if you want to be a blessing to this ministry before I go, uh, we don't ask for donation. You see that. We don't ask for tithe and offering and all that from you. If you're a part of a ministry, pay your tithe and offering there. Hallelujah. But if you have something to spare, we want to give you value for your money. We want you to go to www.kingdomtrilogy.com and a way of sowing into the ministry is buying those kingdom books. Buy them for you. Buy them for friends. Buy them for your neighbor. Buy them for loved ones. What do we know that's giving you value? Why? Because the kingdom takes care of our ministry. And we really don't need to please anyone in these challenging times. So if you want to give, please, you know, message us or uh, uh, let us know about our webpage. There are ways to give uh, if you feel led. But we're never going to pressure you and ask you for anything. We want to give you value. If you want to bless the ministry and bless your lives or bless someone, you want more information on what we've been teaching, we can't teach all of it in a day, go to www.kingdomtrilogy.com or go to Amazon and look for books by Kilafo Kali, Shalevo Kali, buy those kingdom books, read them. It's full. It's going to bless you. Like I, I please ask you to buy those books. I mean, we've invested years into developing them and they are full of treasures and nuggets that will bless your life. Buy them for friends, buy them for colleagues, buy them for your husband and wife, buy them for your children. The rest of the year, read that, catch up, this is so much, and you will see a lot about what we're saying. With scripture, scripture by scripture by scripture, that you can go in your Bible and look and see what it's saying for yourself, and, and make your own assessment of if that word is true, go in your study Bibles and study along with it. I don't want you to force anything down. I want you to study with your own Bible and see if it makes sense. Even what we're sharing, see what we're sharing and go over the scriptures and see if it's real. In this hour, you need to follow people who are going to show you the scripture, not throw some stuff down your throat for you to accept it. See if it lines up with what you believe from reading it, the scripture, a proper context, uh, and, and be blessed. So until next time, I don't know when, we just come on here. I know every Sunday we come on for sure now, but through the week sometimes the Lord will have us come on. Just give a notification or a fly or something. Loretto, South Africa, God bless you. Chalewa, greeting everyone and showing love. Thank you all for staying. Greet the family in South Africa. Greet the family in India. I know many people uh, have to go because of the time. Thank you for the investment. We love you all. We love you. We appreciate you. Till next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. Keep us in, keep us in prayer. And we'll see you soon. We love you. Bye-bye.